Hey guys, Magic Man here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a game in my Tier 6 Ogna Boy. Uh, this is a game that I had recently that was uh, kind of bittersweet. Uh, it was definitely a, s a sad outcome for me, but uh, what can I say? This is a Tier 7 game. We're in a Tier 6 ship. This is the uh, Tier 6 Russian Destroyer. And uh, in case you haven't found out by watching some of the videos on my channels, I do really enjoy Destroyer gameplay. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Cruiser gameplay. Uh, I do like playing them. Uh, it's just currently with the game as it is now where there's five battleships on each team. Uh, it's not really any fun playing a Cruiser because uh, you just get focused down, really. Uh, Anytime it seems that battleships spot a cruiser, they'll switch from shooting at a battleship to shooting at the cruiser, and it's basically the end of the game for you because you can't bounce battleship shells. You just have to try and avoid them. But uh, that's a discussion for another time. They really need to do something to help the low, the mid-tier cruisers. They put a module in the game that makes your rudder shift very quick for the high-tier cruisers. Uh, I think it's tier eight and above. Get that, but anything between like 5 and uh, tier 5 and tier 7 you know you still got slow rudder shift there's still a lot of battleships on each team uh, this game actually being one of the exceptions there were a lot of cruisers in this game and a lot of battles or not battleships but destroyers and uh, I think the fact that there were a lot of cruisers in this game is why I actually did good and I know that sounds kinda uh, dumb because cruisers are typically like a soft counter to destroyers but uh, the Russian destroyers are you can kinda deal with cruisers at range as long as you have support just because it uh, your maneuverability is so good in a destroyer um, at 11 and 12 kilometers that usually uh, those cruisers can't really hit you too well and you're about to see an example of the great Russian dispersion didn't really change my aim there because I knew the dispersion got me on that last shot and uh, aim in the same place and get two hits and now I'm actually uh, just overshooting him but uh, kind of land one on his tail there and that was kind of a weird animation because I landed those two shells but uh, the explosions didn't occur so I was kind of curious I was like oh what happened there but set of fire on this guy uh, it looks like he's trying to slow down to use a smoke and land a couple more shots on him. He is, in fact, smoking up, so I'm going to lose sight of him. And there are actually a lot of cruisers over here. Uh, there's, yep, there's the third one, and I think there's one more on his way up here. Uh, and as you saw that engagement right there, uh, typically that's what you want to do when you engage an American destroyer. Uh, as soon as you see him, just uh, turn around and kite him away because uh, the American guns are have such slow shell velocity that uh, he's going to have a very hard time hitting you. And you're going to have a very easy time hitting him in a Russian destroyer. So, Anytime you run across another uh, gunboat, you know, you just turn around and kite him away. And right now, I'm kind of just uh, patrolling this area because I know there's at least one destroyer up here. And I want to try and kill him if I can. But I don't want to get too close to the enemy cruisers because once I get in about 9 kilometers, that's really kind of dangerous at that particular range because the shells don't take very long to get to you and usually you can't dodge out of the way of them. Uh, so, you know. About 10 to 9 kilometers is starting to get sort of a dangerous range when you're getting around cruisers as a destroyer. And uh, I see some shells coming in. I am going to take a couple of these. And wow, I actually only take one, but it actually, but it starts a fire. Um, shouldn't be all that surprising. I mean, it is Japanese HE. It has a very good fire starting chance. And uh, There are actually two Farragut's up here, but uh, they're not going to have a very good time because they're facing Russian gunboats and for whatever reason they decided to engage us at range uh, which is kind of a dumb thing but uh, lands pretty good shells on him 
And now this other guy that I had uh, stripped a lot of health off of earlier is back. So I'm going to switch my fire to him. And wow, dispersion made the shell land on both sides of his ship. Finally get a shell to land on there, not much, and he is now turning away. And wow, uh, actually get hit, I'm thinking, by a Nurnberg. Uh, there might have been some shells from that other enemy Fergit in there too, but... And I'm not sure this guy knew how to play his ship because he's currently shooting armor-piercing shells at me, which is a bad choice for destroyers. Uh, you definitely want to shoot high explosive at destroyers. They have no armor. You're going to do the most damage and incapacitate a lot of things with it. And it looks like my allies are going to get the kill on that uh, other Farragut that I was working on earlier in the match. And I'm going to see if I can get this guy. And that's, that's when I notice I uh, was driving right into the map border here. And I'm actually going to smoke up here because uh, those cruisers uh, are getting awfully close. And I definitely do not want to be seeing This guy is just spewing AG. Because I think there's also another cruiser behind that smoke screen. And I'm actually going to switch over to armor piercing. Uh, about 7 kilometers and less. You can do some pretty good uh, armor piercing damage on uh, these lightly armored cruisers like uh, the Nuremberg. You see there I got about 1600 damage uh, off of those penetrations. And this guy starts slowing down a lot, and I was not expecting it. Because, uh, as you can see here, I did not adjust my aim enough. And got about 1700 points of damage off those last couple of penetrations. I am kind of hitting his turrets and other things. Uh, I should be aiming a little bit further back. Uh, right under his smokestack, because that's where the sweet spot is. And I finally get a citadel penetration uh, on his forward magazine. And then uh, the next shot of armor piercing kind of sinks him. And now I'm going to start focusing on this Cleveland. But uh, he unfortunately started turning out. And we miss all those shots. And now I'm going to switch back over to HE since she's angling out. Uh, not going to be able to penetrate at that steep of an angle. And yeah, he's just running away from me now. Which is a good idea. And I'm not quite sure what this enemy Farragut is doing. Uh, he's still firing AP at me. And he is doing it while he's chasing me, which is not a good idea. And I definitely didn't need that shot enough. Because uh, he committed to that turn. I felt like he was going to turn back in, but it just didn't happen. And just kind of nick his butt there. And I'm just doing what I did earlier in the match. I'm just turning and kiting him. I'm also uh, not trying to get very close to him because uh, he's got a cruiser back there helping him. And on top of that, uh, there is an enemy destroyer in our base. And I'm actually heading back to see if I can stop that. Uh, mainly because so far what I've seen from my team... Uh, all of them in training up to the north side of the map. I, it has not instilled any confidence in me uh, about the uh, ability of our team. Because it's definitely not a good idea for your whole team to move up to one side of the map. You typically lose a game when your team does that. And uh, there's really nothing you can do about it. And I'm doing a really bad job of leading this guy. He's making himself very hard to hit. He's just being very elusive. Uh, changing his course frequently. And I let him just a tad bit too much there. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the shot. Oh, and we get on both sides of him. Well, that was pretty sad. Sometimes this version does that to you. And we get land a shell so close it actually incapacitates something, even though I didn't hit him directly. And it, it, it just is what it is, but this should be it right here. And boom, land a shell on the back of his ship, and he's done for. Now, at this point, I didn't want to go down around the south side of that island, mainly due to the fact that... Uh, there's nothing down there for me to shoot at, and these cruisers up here at the north, I need to keep them from getting a uh, angle where they can flank our friendly ships, but uh, I don't think it's going to matter much. 
because most of our friendlies are actually dying pretty quickly. Um, from what I can tell, uh, the guys that have already gone down uh, kind of pushed across the map into the enemy team, and on a standard battle, that's kind of a bad idea because uh, if you push into the enemy team on a standard battle, unless you have some really good players on your team, typically you're going to lose because, uh, well, you're just going to die. And that's typically, and that's, uh, well, not typically, but that's what's happened here. Uh, anyways, uh, this Furutaka was giving me a pretty good, the pretty good uh, side of a ship. Um, so I switched over to AP, but uh, of course he turns around, so now I've swapped back to high explosive. And if he continues his turn, which he is, uh, I'm actually gonna start slapping him in the side with some AP, and I'm just uh, driving away from him at this point. Just changing my course ever so slightly. And we get a couple penetrations there, but not a whole lot of damage. Probably a little bit more than if I had been shooting uh, HE at him, but swap back over to HE, see if we can start a fire, and we do actually get one. Now, this York that's behind this guy um, was actually a little bit concerning. I'm not quite sure who he is firing at. Uh, I know it wasn't me, but uh, that Atlanta that was in front of me actually goes down, which is unfortunate because now this guy's going to angle in towards me. And all my shots just bounced right there, so got to switch over to HE and it's going to smoke up because there are way too many cruisers up here for my liking. And there's also a Kiev, which is the tier 7 Russian destroyer, uh, which is a very good ship. Now, this Cleveland pretty much needs to die. Uh, his whole ship is black, surprisingly, so he's actually taking a fair amount of damage all over his ship. Which is uh, why I kind of swapped over to AP here, because I didn't think I'd start a fire on him. But uh, he's kind of angling in towards me. And so I've got no option but to fire eye explosive, and that's why I actually start a fire. I was a little bit surprised, but he puts it out immediately. So we're just going to keep trying to get some uh, HE damage on him, and he is actually coming in my direction, which is kind of scary. And then we start another fire on him, so that fire should take him out. And there it goes. Yep, he is dead. And now I'm swapping over to AP since this uh, Furutaka is giving me the broadside of a ship. Uh, because you can actually penetrate the citadel of a cruiser at this range with these uh, Russian destroyer guns and we actually get a, a uh, citadel there. Now uh, his guns are turning my direction and I'm doing a really bad job of shooting here like I probably could already kill him if I had adjusted my aim a little bit lower and uh, those shots actually all missed and he knocks out my engine but the uh, next shot does it and now the York's getting in on it. So, uh, the York is actually kind of a special German cruiser. Uh, its shells lose so much velocity in the air that uh, it's very hard to hit things with it because uh, the shells just go so slow. So I stop firing, drop off a detection. I'm trying to get out in front of this guy uh, because I'm going to be a lot better off if I can kite him than if I have to fight him uh, side on because there is an island over here. And that's going to keep me from actually being able to uh, kite him away, which really sucks. But uh, it looks like he has realized what the situation is, and he, uh, he's actually turning in. He does have the angle on me. He is going to catch me, and uh, there's no way I'm going to get away. Now, uh, this being a replay and all, I probably should have stopped right here and hid behind this island because there is a scout at planing up and I probably could have uh, sat behind this island till he got close enough for me to launch my torpedoes and taking him out but uh, it was the heat of the moment I wasn't thinking straight I was just thinking man I need to get away from this guy but uh, it's just not gonna happen he's closing on me too rapidly even with my ship moving at 40 knots he's uh, got the right angle on me to actually catch me and I was really hoping he was going to keep driving a straight line uh, at me because he probably would have sailed right into those torpedoes at the end of the range. But uh, as we can see here, he is already starting his turn. And 
And this is just going to be uh, awful for me. I do what I can to try and uh, avoid these shots. I'm doing a decent job right now. And I switch over to uh, armor piercing. And I almost run into the island here. That would have been devastating. I was just trying to survive long enough to uh, use my smoke screen. And this uh, AP damage is actually going to going to do quite a bit to him. And there's my confederate. So I've done quite a bit of damage in this. Match already in. Uh, just notice that when I saw, when I started engaging this cruiser, uh, he was basically at full health. And now we've already whittled him down to uh, about, uh, you know, a little bit less than half. Really, uh, he's about on a quarter of his health now. And I think this is when he realized he needs to angle in, otherwise I might actually kill him. And I repair that there. And I'm actually going to smoke up here to try and stay alive long enough to use my torpedoes to kill him. But uh, this shot just, boom, does me in. There's nothing that I could do about that. And it was unfortunate. But, uh... Because I really wanted to kill that guy and get my Kraken because uh, I was on four kills. And that was basically...